Welcome to Get It Done Entrepreneurs, where we talk with founders of companies who bet on themselves in one. My name is Rich Lebrun, and I am the founder and CEO of Lebrun Advisory Group. You can find us at rlebrun.com. Our mission is to help our clients build wealth through business ownership. Stick around to the end of the show, and we'll reveal how you can be our next guest. Our special guest today is Nicole Grinnell. She's founder and CEO of Boson Solutions. Nicole comes from a long line of entrepreneurs and small business owners with childhood memories of Christmas resembling episodes of Shark Tank. I get it. I love that show, and I can see that'd be a lot of fun in the family. For most of her career, she served as an executive assistant in, in the corporate world. She excelled with her small business background and work ethic. Taking her passion for organization and efficiency, she founded Boson, a boutique remote staffing firm. Boston is dedicated to providing small business owners with affordable solutions to help grow and scale, regardless of economic circumstances. She took the idea of being a virtual assistant and built it into a multi-million dollar company. She oversaw all administrative operations at the nation's largest restaurant franchisee. She served 15 years of executive support at Nielsen, a top 15 company, and she provided over 500 small businesses with remote teams allowing them to safe, safely scale. She lives with her family in Atlanta, Georgia. And with that said, welcome, Nicole, to the show. Thank you, Rich. Excited to be here. Well, I'm glad you're here as well. Nicole, we'd love to hear your story about how you started Boson. Tell us how that came about. Was it voluntary, involuntary? You know, was it easy? Did you have some fear, trepidation? Our listeners would love to know what, what it took to go all in and bet on yourselves. Yeah. Well, um, I would say like, you know, it's, I like the way you use that voluntary and involuntary, because I feel like every business owner probably has felt both of those emotions, but I think the best business ideas are really from just seeing a need out there. And that's really where Boson came from. So my background is in executive assisting operations, love small business came from it. And I found over the course of all my corporate career, I was having business owners reach out to me like, hey, could you help me with this? Do you know how to do this? Could you come in and maybe just do a project for me? And so I love doing that. Um, I love getting in with business owners and kind of tackling what they're going and figuring out a way to make it more efficient um, and really help them to be able to scale. And so I had a job as an executive assistant. I was supporting one of the owners. He retired and I thought, okay, well, this is kind of a good jumping off point. At that time, about six years ago, the buzzword was really virtual assistant. And I thought, well, I will become a virtual assistant. This is what I enjoy. I love it. Um, and I did. And within about two weeks, I had so much work that I realized this is like a real need. And I felt like I was uniquely qualified for it because not just being able to be an executive assistant, I could really understand how businesses needed to run and why I was so successful bringing these clients in was I was able to walk them through what they needed, not just be available to take on tasks. And so I kind of flipped what I thought I was going to do, um, brought on a business partner. She was there to help with sales. And I was going to do all the operational and the recruiting and the coaching um, and consulting with our clients. And we turned it into a business. And so that's how it kind of came about. Wasn't necessarily in my line of sight when I first started. But again, that was the voluntary involuntary, right? It just was a need. And I knew we could solve this. And so do you, uh, how long have you been doing this? Six years, you said? Yes, this we're going into our sixth year. Now, do you work with companies all around the country because you're virtual? Yeah, so we, um, some of our first clients were actually out in Hawaii. Um, so we are coast to coast, truly. Do you do any uh, any work around the world in different countries? We haven't ventured into the international market, um, primarily because who we're recruiting is really US-based. Um, and so we found kind of the, the time change and everything that goes into that, we haven't gone international. Yeah, that can be a stumbling block sometimes is for my business as well. Um, now, do you specialize in a certain sector in, in the support staffing or is, it, is it, or is it a wide range? It is a wide range. So what we have um, is we have what we call remote experts, and that's going to be really everything from administrative, operational, um, efficiencies, and um, kind of secretarial tasks. And then we also have our bookkeeping side, which is really making sure 
Um, your bookkeeping is obviously done, payroll, any type of reporting that can be done. We have our podcast services and social media, which is going to encompass being booked on podcasts, such as yourself, um, as well as running people's social media accounts. And then we do direct placement. So we have a lot of businesses that maybe they're at that next stage in their business where they're ready to bring on a full-time hire and we can help with that recruiting. So the goal of Bosin was really to serve as an all-encompassing staffing model for the business. So you actually probably add dis added disciplines over the six years as you've grown and found the needs. It sounds like your person likes to meet your client's needs. So you, you yes. found different, maybe someone wanted to do podcasts and you jumped into that arena. Uh, exactly. That's why I love the title of your podcast. Get it done. That's how we feel. <laughs> as you know, business owners, I mean, there's just a flurry of things that come across their plates. And when we first started, we were kind of saying we're, we're virtual assistants and we realized we were so much more than that. We were really providing that consulting. We were meeting their growing needs, different stages of their business. And so we actually did a rebranding about three years ago. Um, to really be able to convey that message to our clients. I've always firmly believed if you solve the people problem, you win the game. And you are in the people pro people solving problem business. Uh, and then all you need to do is add the one word, yes. And because you can, you can mobilize your forces and you can meet your clients' needs. So you're in a wonderful position. But it's been six years you've been in business. Can you look back and is there anything that you would have done differently? Any decision you would have made differently knowing what you know today? Ooh, I probably would have done it sooner. Honestly. I mean, I, um, I'm, I'm a high risk tolerant person. Um, and this is truly my passion, um, not only for small businesses, but really providing those opportunities for women that are maybe at a different stage of life where they're not wanting to work in corporate life or they're not needing to work full time. So it was such a true joy when we started that I do look back and think like, I should have bet on myself like a long time ago and done something like this. Um, but no, I mean, no regrets. Every stage has been a learning stage. Um, we've learned from our clients. Um, so I am just really thankful for where we are now. Okay. On the flip side, you're successful. You built this in a multi-million dollar business. Go figure, right? In six years, that's that's my hat's off to you. Congratulations. Um, is there any decisions that you made and looking back that were really the ones that were the catalyst to your growth? Some one made some good good decisions you made. Well, I would say um one that we're actually currently in, I would put that in. We actually changed up our um kind of business model and how we're supporting the clients. Um, and that was, we were moving from really kind of weekly increments of, um, the way that they would be scaling with their team member to now monthly and really helping develop that relationship. We started that about six months ago and already we are just seeing not only fantastic return, um, financially and the way we're able to bring clients in, but for current clients, we're really able to see how much better this suits their business. And so that's been rewarding on really all sides of the house. Um, and that's something that's actually just new to the company. So we've been very proud of that. Can you explain that a little bit more? What was the, uh, what was the reasoning? I mean, you think most people in the virtual world, you think you're hiring on shorter increments. What was a paradigm shift to go from weekly to monthly and why are the clients embracing that? Yeah. So what we were finding over the years, was we were working off of what we called essentially weekly minimum saying, Hey, as a client, you would come in and you were committed to a weekly amount of hours. But what we found was the week was so um, uh, confining because so many things can happen during a week, right? And so what we were finding were contractors may be out, um, clients may be out, and now there was this restrictive, very short restrictive parameter around that. And so what we did was we changed it to monthly saying, hey, what we're going to do is we're going to build that relationship. And these are the amount of hours that you have your team member available for you through the month. Because as you know, running a business there's highs, there's lows, there's times you're out, there's busier times. And so we were able to really hear from the clients and hear their feedback, hear from the contractors to say, hey, it's not always going to fit Monday through Friday, right? Um, there's peak times in that. And so we we adjusted that model to suit both sides of that. I really think that's brilliant. You know, I really do. When I think about being in corporate America and on the, being on the hiring side, you know, we had a great need because we were shorthanded. So we had to go find somebody, hire them. We hire them, but then we're so busy. We have a hard time onboarding them 
and getting them up to speed. It's just sometimes the timing doesn't align. And same thing in the virtual world. I mean, I need we need the help, but sometimes our internal business takes us off course for a week or two days or three days. But having the freedom to use those hours in a month, I think it's really a wonderful solution to the needs of your business, of your clients. I can see why they embrace that. Thank you for that. Yeah, absolutely. Let's take a little commercial break. Okay, tell us about, about Boson. Tell us about the name. How, what's, what's the name? Is there anything story behind the name? And then uh, who are your clients? Uh, who would be utilizing your services? Uh, any, and any commercial uh, promotion you'd like to do, uh, feel free to, to share that with our listeners. Yeah, so Boson, the name actually is a nautical term. And the true definition of it is the person on the ship that supports the captain, the equipment, and the crew. And so when we were kind of going through this rebranding, we were really trying to, you know, you're kind of brainstorming, like, what do we want to be for our clients, right? And and that's ultimately what we want to be. We want to be the support that they can come to for technology requests, consultation, and really keep them in that captain seat, and then also managing their crew. So that's really where the name came from. We're actually really proud of it. Um, and it's, it was been a great rebranding to really encompass what we're doing. So our clients are honestly all over the board. I always say, because these are true clients, it is for the solopreneur that runs a fencing company in Indiana to the Manhattan-based law firm. Um, on the back of the house, business is all the same, right? Like the efficiencies need to be there, processes need to be there, and we need someone implementing it. So it's a really cool thing for us to be in because we get to see behind the scenes of a lot of businesses, um, which is really awesome and has been a great lear learning tool for us. Um, but regardless of your business or the stage, there's certain things that need to be done. And so we're able to provide those um, regardless of where you're at. So well, that's kind of our, um, you know, sales pitch, so to speak, and what Boson does. So there is a, you bill out on a monthly basis. There's a, is there a minimum? Is it a minimum one month of your services? Is that, is that now the new minimum? Yes. So okay. essentially 30 days. Yep. 30 days. I love the virtual world. I mean, I think it's been out there for a long time. I think COVID just accelerated it. Um, and, and people figured out now they can work virtually and be very effective, especially if there's someone who's a good quarterback like you are for your team. And, you know, understand it from a client relations, how to get your team members to support your clients. I think that's a critical need today, which brings me to the second question for today. Um, we're facing a lot of crazy headwinds in 2022. And what I always tell my clients, I said, all the headwinds that we're facing today always will happen. Always. We'll have wars, we'll have recessions, we'll have labor shortages and political unrest. Always. Very rarely do we have them all in one year. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and that's what we're doing today. So you're no different. You're a founder. You have to face these things for your own self and your own company. And also as an individual CEO. So I'd like to hear both answers, like how are you navigating your company, okay, mm -hmm. and then and how are you also navigating yourself? Yeah, well, and I'm going to add one too. There is really even kind of the BOSIN model. It was funny when we started, you know, I was kind of like naively just being like, this makes sense for everyone. I don't, I don't, how, how come this isn't going on? This is just such a great thing for every business owner. And when COVID hit, we really got to prove our business model because the reality is it's a fractional staffing. You're paying for really just the hours that you need. And regardless of the stage of business, whether you're cutting back, whether you're growing, that um, flexibility to like, we say this a lot, we really believe that revenue and labor should be tied together. So when your revenue is booming, your labor should be increasing, right? But when that is decreasing for whatever reason, whether you're pulling back to invest, you know, downturn in the market, that line should go down as well. And so during COVID, we were able to put that to the test. And we actually flourished in COVID because where people were having to lay people off, um, for instance, the big market for us was attorneys. You know, court shut down, everything shut down. And then all of a sudden they came back open and nobody had full-time staff anymore. So they were calling us being like, I need paralegals. Can you find me an associate? I need a legal assistant. And we were able to turn that really quickly because we had vetted people. They were ready. They knew how to work remotely. They knew how to work fractionally. And we were able to support them um, very quickly. So that was kind of one thing that we dealt with internally. It was actually a really great year for us to um, this past year to really pull back and do some of that housekeeping for us as well. So while things were a little bit down, it was like, okay, well, how can we 
And I really do believe business owners should do this anytime it's slow. I mean, I, you can talk about summer, you can talk about Christmas break, you can talk about recession. When it's slow, that's an opportunity for you really to look in house, get things in order because those gates are going to open again. And now you've just set yourself up for success. So investing in yourself, investing in your company, investing in your team. Um, don't get scared by it. You know, I, I know we're, we're all like, there's fear mongering going on out there, but I truly believe when you've got good processes, good people and a good product, like all those things are going to align when things turn around. Okay. I'll stay in that for a second. Okay. If I would ask 15 owners, I get 15 answers the same. Labor is an issue today yes. and you're providing labor. So do you have a magic wand? Are you finding all these people, all these employees that are hiding somewhere? <laughs> I mean, it's got to be a challenge for you because if I have a great need, you have to meet my needs. So how are you balancing that in this context of everybody saying, where's the, where's the labor? Well, first and foremost, it's my team. I do have an amazing team that is able to do that. Um, but I was actually just at a lunch before this that we were talking about that. Hiring is a full-time job, especially if you are looking for a very um, specific, very um, high caliber, like, you know, you've got a small business, that's even more, um, the stakes are higher, right? Because now you've got this really small little team family that you're bringing someone into. Um, I can tell you a lot of people do not know how to interview and they walk away disappointed. And when we hear, you know, sometimes they'll say, well, I would like to interview. And I actually always like to take that opportunity because I'm able to kind of point out like, all we did was hear about you. We didn't hear anything about the candidate. We didn't talk about, you know, actual on the job questions. Um, so it's it's a full time job. And when we're able to really commit, you know, full time resources to that and the business owner is able to say, hey, this is what I need. This is what's important to me. These are my values. That's where I know you mentioned kind of that boutique. Like we're not trying to just put warm bodies. We want a role that can grow. We want to understand what are your goals for this in, in two years? What does this role look like for you? Um, and that's the person that we're wanting to bring in, but it's a full-time job to source that person. Um, so no, no magic wand, just time experience, um, resources that we have that allow us to bring better candidates. Is the pool of, I'm going to call it virtual or fractional. That's, that's the word a lot of people are using today of uh, people out there growing to people saying, you know, I like, I like this fractional thing this virtual thing. I could work from home. I could kind of pick and choose my hours and times. Is that really, is that uh, base of staff people growing? Is that an attractive industry today from the, from the employee side? So what I would tell you, and I, I mentioned this a little bit about the, the women in their different stage, we're recruiting from a different pool than people that are maybe necessarily trying to climb the corporate ladder and are wanting to work remotely. We're kind of taking two different people. We have the business owner that wants fractional support, whether for budgetary time, whatever the case may be. And then we're taking an individual that wants fractional work for what life situation, travel, whatever that might be. And we're essentially merging those. So there's compromises on both those sides. So for the traditional remote worker that wants to climb the corporate ladder and be six figures in a year, this is not, that is not the demographic we're going after. We're going after people that are wanting to work fractionally, being remote, works for their lifestyle, um, but they would like to continue their career in some fraction. And that's really who we're targeting. And there's a lot of high caliber people who fit that mold. A hundred percent. When we first started the company, um, I mean, as you said, I've lived in California, I've lived all over the country and I was just calling all my friends and I was like, you were a Salesforce project manager, you were an accountant, you were this. And there was this huge pool of women that were all in my age range at that time, 35 ish that had taken a step back, whether it was for children. Um, we do a lot of military moms. And mm -hmm. so for one reason or another, they had to take a step back from a true traditional career, but would love an opportunity to still be able to do something. And that's really where that kind of matchmaking came in to say, hey, you can only work 10 hours a week. Bob only needs 10 hours a week. Let's get you guys together. Yeah, I think that's great. And you mentioned military. There's a lot of military yeah. spouses that you have to be, uh, you know, have to travel a lot and be on the go and it's hard for hold a full, full, full time job. Oh, yeah. So the line in the sand is you you are virtually you are virtual you are uh, not you're not a recruiter, so you're really placing people on there for incremental fractional uh, support. 
I want to make sure our listeners understand the difference. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Well, Nicole, is there anything that you would like to share with our listeners about maybe well, talk to the person who's at corporate America right now listening and uh, thinking about maybe it's time for him or her to jump ship and bet on themselves. You said you wish you would have done it earlier. Speak to them about, you know, what would be, what would you be telling them today? I would just say, you know, I hear this a lot where people will kind of do a side hustle thing, which I think is great, you know, build up your business, see if this works, see whatever. But at some point you got to jump off that cliff and bet on yourself. I'm a real like, Hey, what's the worst that can happen? You go back to corporate life, right? Like it's this, the worst case scenario here. Right? So I think if you know that you've done your homework, you know, there's a need for it. You have a target audience and you're willing to work and hustle. You're going to be successful. Like it, it just, it's going to work out. So bet on yourself. The last, I mean, I, I would be kicking myself if in 20 years I had never started this and thought, man, that would have been cool to do. And it's like, now I can say that I've done it. And, you know, even if it hadn't worked out, I would have tried. Yeah, I think that's great advice. I, I, I try to tell my clients, we're all corporate executives. While they're at corporate America running major companies, uh, they got that down pat to a science. Yeah. They're very effective and, and very uh, successful. And the, but when I mentioned about med, betting on themselves, it seems like all those skill sets instantly went away. Like, oh, wait a minute, what happened to all that, you know, credibility you built up all these years? Just apply it to yourself. But there is a there is a fear factor. There is a fear factor, but I would also say corporate does not equal security. And if you've been around long enough, you, I mean, I have been the person who is moving names up and down a spreadsheet on who's being laid off, and know the fragility that is behind that. So. I think, you know, that doesn't always equal um, security. So if if you've done your homework, like I said, you've got some financial reserves, you bet on yourself, like I say, go for it. Yeah, I think the pendulum actually is swung. I think it's more risky to work for corporate America today. Um, unless you're in that sweet spot, which is maybe 30 to 40 years old. But generally speaking, it's more risky than it is to go in business for yourself. You know, if you can... You can go after it and bet on yourself, trust your instincts. Uh, you can pretty much uh, you know, control your future destiny. Talk to the business owner because you adapted. To, COVID was a good time for you, but it sounds like you adapted, you pivoted, you even did some rebranding. You got business owners on the, on the uh, listening today who are considering maybe they should add additional revenue stream. Maybe they should expand their company. Can you speak to them? Yeah. I mean, the first thing I would say is, you know, have some great advisors in your back pocket. Um, take everything with a grain of salt, right? You're the one day to day that knows how to run it, but I can guarantee you if you've got great advisors, there's always going to be a nugget in there for you based on experience. Listen to your clients, talk to them like, Hey, what else would be helpful for you? They may have some great revenue generators, um, in their, in their thought of like, man, it'd be great if you did this for me. Um, so talk to that and then just be willing to pivot. Um, your idea does not have to be the best one in the room. In fact, I want mine to be the worst. I want to surround myself with a team that is thinking ways of how we can improve, how we can better serve our clients, how we can better serve our team. Um, and just be willing to listen, be willing to implement it, um, create a culture where if it doesn't work, it's okay. We tried, like, let's, let's pick back up. And we have a joke around here where anytime something we're like, oh, we should be doing that. We'll kind of raise our hand and go, oh, new policy. So it's just, you know, like be nimble, um, don't be proud, be humble, like listen to people. That's the biggest thing I can give advice to is just listen and then know how that suits your business and who you are. Fantastic advice. All right. Lastly, yourself, you have to get up every morning. You're the CEO. You're, you know, you have to, you know, lead the troops. Uh, What do you do for yourself? You have certain disciplines, you're a reader, you have mentors, you know, you have certain uh, routines. How do you keep yourself focused? Um, I do have a fantastic mentor. He's actually um, someone that I worked, I was actually his EA and still am. You never leave. I mean, you can throw CEO (laughs) out there, but you're EA in two seconds when he calls. Um, And he's done it all. And he's just invaluable um, wisdom for me and scenarios. And so definitely listen, reach out to people who've been through it. Um, I'm not a reader, but I am a documentary nerd. Um, I love Marcus Limonis. If you've seen his CNBC show, yep. um, I feel like Marcus and I could be BFFs if I'm going to be honest. And I, he's from, he's from Chicago. Okay. Well, I actively reach out to him. 
I'm not saying I'm a stalker, but I am like Marcus, we need to meet because <laughs> everything he's about. And as you, if you know him, his passion for business owners, it's just, it bleeds through him. And so love his shows um, and just love learning about people who have been in the trenches and have lived it and learned from it. Yeah. Yeah. He's definitely been an inspiration. I love watching those shows between that and Shark Tank. I think if you yes. just sit in front of the TV, you know, watch those two shows, all their episodes, you'd have yourself an NBA uh, level education. So and fun um, fact, I'm a big Shark Tank nerd too. And we actually got a client from them. I watched their episode. I emailed them and I was like, Hey, you need us. And they've been with us for three years. It's dope. They're awesome. They do the cookie stuff. Um, and so just, uh, that would be my tip for business. Go after it. Go you for are, that. You are the uh, epitome of the, the name of my show. Yeah, thanks for being yeah, on. Like, <laughs> Get it done. Are we talking about it? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's fantastic. Well, Nicole, I know you're busy. Uh, and I always, on behalf of our listeners, I'm, I'm so grateful that the founders of companies like yourself, CEOs, take time out of their busy day to be willing to share their insight and wisdom with other people around the world. I think it makes a difference for all of us. And with that, I just want to say, how can our guests get a hold, or how could our listeners get a hold of you should they want to do business with you? Yeah, so they can check us out at Bosun Solutions, which is B-O-S-U-N, um, solutions.com. And um, they can fill out a form, get to know a little bit more about what we do. And we would love the opportunity to meet you. Very good. We'll, we'll put that information in the podcast notes and you'll find this podcast on all podcast platforms in about three weeks. Nicole, I just want to wish you a great day. It was fun conversation. And thank you again for taking time. Thanks, Rich. And thank you for having me. All right. Take care. Rich LeBrun here. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast, Get It Done Entrepreneurs. If you are a successful business owner who would like to be on this program, please visit us at rlebrun.com forward slash podcast and fill out the form and we will reach out to you. If you got something out of this interview, would you share this episode on social media? Just do a quick screenshot with your phone and text it to a friend or post it on the socials. If you know someone that would be a great guest, tag them on social media to let them know about the show and include the hashtag get it done entrepreneurs. I love seeing your posts and guest suggestions. We are regularly putting out new episodes and content. To make sure you don't miss any episodes, go ahead and subscribe. Your thumbs up ratings and reviews go a long way to help promote the show and mean a lot to me and my team. Want to know more? Go to our website, rlebrun.com, or follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. Thanks for listening. We will see you next time.